Hello, this is Pickleton, and welcome back to Let's Play Disgaea! So, since last time, I spent a little bit of time uh, trying to find an item, or a, a new sword for Laharl. As you can see, it's got eight arms masters on it. So, now both characters have arms masters. Keep Laharl with the Imperial Seal. Don't bother buying any armor yet. Uh, you don't really need it. Well, I mean, I couldn't afford it anyways, but... Even if you could, don't worry about it. So this is the uh, Netherworld Hospital. When you uh, get... When you heal yourself here, you can pay money to get healed. Uh, you can see at the bottom, there's HP, SP, and DEC for Deceased. So, let's heal Etna there, so you select your name, press X, and as you can see, our HP healed and SP healed have both increased by 1. Now you can get, um, you can get rewards for different benchmarks, or thresholds, when you uh, heal at the hospital. So let's start the new level. Yeah, lifting and throwing. This is a very unique mechanic to the Disgaea franchise. Not... I don't think I've ever seen another, uh... SRPG that does this. So, out of range. You can just take another character. Only humanoids, by the way, not monsters. Pick them up. Yeah, that's a somewhat te cheap trick that you can use uh, to deal with strong monsters. Is you can just have a weak character pick them up and essentially sacrifice them for taking the uh, holding damage. Uh, if you're holding anything at the end of a turn, you will take damage based on their maximum HP, I think? Uh, yeah, so... But you can prevent them from getting a turn by doing that, but... Now that we know how to lift and throw, let's not use it. I want to get some team attacks in here, so... Let the enemy come to you. So, so far I've been hitting triangle and then hitting execute. But now, uh, since I know that it's going to be... I'm not going to be putting in anything else, I can just hit end turn, and it will also execute. Here I come. Here. I'll just finish him off. And we're good. Okay, so let's continue on to the next one. I'm not really taking any damage here, so no need to go to the hospital. Okay, so Geo Panels. This is another thing that's, I think, unique to the uh, Disgaea franchise. Um, so there's these... Uh, I'll be explaining it in my own way while they explain it their way. So basically, there's going to be on... Pretty much every map, there's going to be uh, tiles on the ground that are whatever color. And if there's one of those little pyramid geo symbols on it, it all 
all panels of the color the geo symbol is on will have its effect on it. And if you destroy the geo panel or geo symbol, all of the panels or tiles that of the color that it's on will change to whatever color the geo symbol is. Anybody that's standing on one of those will take damage as it changes, and you can create combos by destroying multiple colors. So say if there was a yellow geo symbol on the red right now, if I were to destroy the blue one, it would also destroy the red. So the red would turn to blue and then to yellow. Now there's also ones that are null. These will actually destroy the geo panels that of the color that they're on. So if there was a blue, a yellow, and a null, if I were to destroy the blue, it would turn all of the red ones to blue, and then all of them would be blue. Then it would turn all of them to yellow. And then it would turn all of them to nothing. It would all be destroyed. Now doing so would create a huge color combo, which um, A would boost, boost the hell out of the bonus gauge, which uh, gives you items at the end of the battle. And B, if you destroy all geo panels on the stage, there will be an extra effect. And that will um, that will do damage, I think, equal to double the amount of the uh, geo symbol damage to all enemies on the on the uh, on the field. It will not do any damage to your allies, like the color changing would. So one thing you're gonna want to do, at least really early on, <clears throat> is to get really good items. You'll want to get um, like before you kill the last enemy on the map, you're going to want to create as big of a geo symbol change as you can. Preferably wiping it out. The problem with this is, especially early on in the game, doing geo panel, uh, like creating combos will most likely kill all of the enemies on the, uh, the tiles, which won't get you any XP. Now, if you're just if you're grinding, that can be fine, but I'm not allowing myself to do that, so it would be bad. So we've got the blue, the yellow, and the null. So just like I explained earlier, destroy the blue, it will also destroy the yellow, and that will destroy the null clearing the entire map and killing all the enemies. So we could just destroy the new blue one, and it would be over. But I'm not going to do that. Right, so these are the bonuses you can get. So if we were to create a combo that big, we'd probably get up to, I'm going to say, seven or eight, maybe? Maybe six? But we'll get all of the items from zero through six if it's a six. But because we're, uh... Because I'm not using the geo panels, just do it the old-fashioned way. Oh, and by the way, the, um... It says EXP and HL, that's how is the money in this game, plus 50, it's actually 50%, but it means that killing enemies that are standing on those panels gives you 50% extra hell and experience. You don't have to be standing on it, just the enemy that you're killing. And also the blue panels that we're standing on are the defense plus 50%, which... It was really nice. I mean, as you can see, Etna is taking no damage. Okay, finish off one. Use Boulder Crush. Might as well use an ability. I'm going to be trying to use abilities as much as possible because uh, it wastes my SP, which I'm going to need to heal at the hospital. So let's destroy the blue one, because if I kill that enemy, the battle will be over and I won't get to do anything. 
So, one last look at that, and let's do it. So all the red ones turn blue. All the blue ones turn yellow. Now in the DS version, you can actually speed up the animation of GeoPanels changing, but overall I prefer this version, so... Sorry. You're gonna have to watch it every time. Ah, okay. Now we get to five, so... Yeah, we get all those items. I mean, even if you don't need those items, selling those items will usually get you a pretty decent amount of money, um, because the items that they give you in battle scale with about how high level you should be at that point. So it's usually about the same items that the enemies will have and all that. Okay, so let's go to the Dark Assembly. Now, with the mana that we have, we can do some stuff, but first, I'm going to be deleting these penguins. Later, dudes. Okay, so he's... Laharl's got 8 mana, Etna's got 9 mana. So, let's make some characters. I'm just going to be giving them random names, because I'm going to be eventually just getting rid of them. Character. So these are male and female brawlers, male and female warriors. Brawlers use fists, have pretty good aptitude for attack and speed. Warriors have a little bit more tanky, I guess. Less range, less counter. And then we've got the mage and skull. Uh, there's male and female, slightly different affinities, but yeah. Then there's red, yellow, and blue for fire, wind, and ice, respectively. Male and female clerics. I don't know why they have male and female for most classes. And there's monsters, but I'm not going to be using monsters, because they're really, really bad in this game. So first, let's have... Laharl make a brawler. Oh, wait. Yeah. Yeah, Laharl. Okay. If you're wondering why I'm making certain characters, or having certain characters make others, it's because you get a um, percentage of your strongest uh, pupil stats. So, in this case, this Rachel is going to be Etna's pupil. So a percentage of all of her stats, it's not very high, it's only like 1% or something, uh, will be transferred over to Etna. So, in the beginning, doesn't not really that special, but over time it really can add up. Uh, especially with, um, like, Etna having really... Since I'm giving her axes, and axes reduce your hit, it helps to have a character with decent hit as her pupil. Or if there's a character that has really low defense, give them a tanky pupil, and it'll give them a slight boost. So, 
as you can see, very good fist mastery. So we're going to want to get her a fist. And in this case, I'm going to be giving her a spear. I could give my warrior a sword, but Laharl's already got swords. So I'm going to get some items for them between now and next time. So this has been Pickleton with some Let's Play Disgaea. I'm going to be signing off. Take it easy, everybody.